Hey guys, it's Otti again. I'm sitting here online with Thomas from Therion. Hi, first of all. Correct. Hi, how are you? Hi, fine. And you? I'm fine. That's great. Um, we are here to talk a little bit because I have to write an article about you and your new album. And we'll come to that later. But first of all, a simple introduction question. What did you do this day before you came to this interview? Today? Yeah. Well, today I've been, you know, I'm working as a, a singer for other bands and other musicians as well. So I have been working with that. And then I realized I have a Zoom meeting and I had a computer crash the other day. So I got the computer back and I lost Zoom. So I, oh no, you know, so I had to, to stress with that. But here I am. Yeah, great. I think that was three minutes later or something like oh, that. <laughs> it, was, it was not that much. It was okay. And I had some... Uh small issues because my zoom had an update just when i started it so i thought okay uh, not too long the update maybe. All, all these updates are from the devil you yeah know? and they always come when you have no time that's the problem of course yeah. of course yeah yeah cool um let's start with a little bit of the basics because i'm a fan of Therion for many years now it's one of the metal bands that uh, brought me into metal back then thank you but um I hope and think some people will watch that even don't know who you are and what's your band all about. So maybe first of all, with your own words, um, sure. what's, what's the uniqueness of Ethereum? What makes the band so special to you? Well, I, I tell you the truth. When I joined the band in 2007, I heard about Ethereum, but I never heard them. Okay. Because they, they were not so big in Sweden, you know. And um, so I got a phone call from Christopher uh, who was presenting himself very straightforward. Hi, I'm Christopher from Therion. We're going on a tour. Do you want to come? <laughs> and I was like, well, I got to listen to the band first. And the day after, I got the express mail with all the CD catalog in the, in the mail, the, mm -hmm. the real mail, I mean. And I put on the Gothic Cabal album. And I was like, I've never heard anything like this before. It was the combination of... of opera musical and rock and metal exactly the same world that i come from you know so i i called him and said yes directly mm. so you have been surprised uh how big they have been uh, at that moment uh, a, a bit yeah a bit i knew they were touring you know max my my good old friend was singing in the band back then and um i knew they were touring around the world but i never understood really how big they were Okay, and just uh, to understand better, where did you come from? What have been your bands to then? Well, back then, I don't remember what I was doing exactly back then, but I come from, I've been in melodic band and I've been a short session in Candlemas as well. Made an album and a tour with them. And I've been playing theater. Also been singing opera in, in the Stockholm Opera House. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah, but but I think you have to be able to sing opera to be in theory and somehow. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it, you have an advantage. You have an yeah. advantage. Yeah. At least you have to be more than one voice. You have yeah, you have so many bit, things inside. So I think you have to be a bit theatrical in in yourself because otherwise, you know, you end up like all the other bands with black t-shirts and black shorts on stage, and that's not what we are. And I don't think the band was ever like that. Maybe when they started off as a death metal band, but that era is gone. Yeah, that's long, so long ago. That, but, you know, yeah. Yes. And um, when you came into the band, how did this change your life? Oh, yeah, it did. You know, I have been in bands out, in and out all the time, and I never felt home in a band, but here I am. I've been there since 2007. And, you know, I uh, it feels like um it feels like a like a haven you know when you when you find if you find a wife that oh this is the girl and I I feel that same this is the band you know so I have I'm I'm really like it and we're I don't know how many we are are we seven in the in the band on stage we all are like a very good friends and it's a very good uh, feeling in the band you know and. There was a point when there wasn't, you know, just when I joined, it was a lot of tense in the band. But now everything is very cool, you know, it's like a, like a family. 
Yeah, that's great. I think this is the reason why you came because uh, things had to change back then at the time. And now yeah. you are stronger than ever, I would say, maybe. Yeah, according to Christopher, who has all the statistics, he, because mm -hmm. he's like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is, really. Yeah. He's very pragmatic. I'm not. But, you know, we're good for each other. We feed each other. He has the things that I that I'm lacking, and vice versa. Uh, but according to him, since Vovin, this is the biggest or or the, the the strongest we've ever been. You know, talk about commercial. You know, mm -hmm. in a commercial aspect, and that feels good because that means that what we do is appreciated. I, I mean, there will always be people that you know. If I'm, I'm reading in internet and people that oh it was better before uh it was better with with that guy in the band or with that guy in the band or with that guitarist in the band but then i go to other people's website bands websites as well and it's the same there you know so we can only do what we do now and what we do best you know yeah, i think the problem of many people is that they don't like changes anyway exactly it's and it doesn't really matter for them if, if it's for the better or, or worse you know they yeah. want the but, you know, not every band, a very few band, I would say, stays together, the original, from the beginning to the to the end. Because, you know, people want to do different stuff, you know. And... Yeah, I see. And um, to explain to the people who don't know you that good is, uh, Christoph is uh, the band leader and the founder, you can say. The one who uh, is also so, the only songwriter, or is it a no, team no. thing? Do you work in teams? Now we do. I mean, before he wrote a lot of stuff himself. Okay. But now we, especially me and him, are like playing tennis with each other online because he lives in Malta and I live in Spain. You know, so <laughs> he's sending me stuff. Do you have an idea for this? And I send it back and mostly he likes it. But, you know, if he doesn't, I, I he's the first to tell me. And <laughs> he's very straightforward. So, this is the worst you ever done. <laughs> but on the other hand, if if he likes it, he said this is the best you ever done. You know, so, so um, we, yeah, that's that's how he is. You know, mm -hmm. and it fits me good. We we have a great companionship. Sounds so I like think it. I wrote I wrote to this Leviathan trilogy that we are doing now. I think I wrote at least some fifty percent of the songs together with Christopher. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is why we are talking. The new mm -hmm. album is coming, uh, Leviathan 3. I was thinking about how to pronounce Leviathan in English today because in German you say Leviathan, and I never like thought how, how is it in English? Le Levi Leviathan, right? Leviathan. Leviathan. Okay. Leviathan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have to learn. That was tough for me too because German yeah. and Swedish are very similar pronounce wise sometimes and we say leviathan as well yeah i see i've talked to a swedish guy some weeks before and he said the same he said uh swedish is like 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 friendly german somehow yeah it is yeah <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah i like it i don't know that much but a little bit some words at least yeah 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 yeah, yeah but, but better, um, we go for, better we'll go for english now right yeah <laughs> i think so um yeah but the, the trilogy is started in 2021 if i'm right so after the pandemic or in the pandemic yeah. it was at least um, it was in the pandemic so we, would you say it's still a child of the pandemic or was it, it just, is. just it is i mean when the pandemic started at least here in spain they closed the whole country you could go out to the pharmacy and you could go uh, to the supermarket of course but you had to go alone that was it that was it so what happened was besides watching netflix and eat a lot of bad food and getting fat <laughs> we started to write songs because we had all the time in the world and let's write an album but this it became so many songs so let's make three you know so it's also recorded in, I think, eight or, or ten different countries, you know, because we couldn't meet. Yeah, I see. And I think it was uh, in Spain, it was really hard, I know, because one of my friends and teammates at Nitrate uh, lives on Gran Canaria. She told me the same. And in Sweden, it was almost the opposite. They have been like, um, yeah, not, not like nothing is, but they have been very open for 
more or less more or less i mean i went when it loosened up a little bit i went to sweden for a wedding actually our former drummer johan's wedding and i came there and i wear the mask you know and everybody why do you wear that <laughs> well because we have to not here yeah but you know it was very yeah. different very yeah. different but i mean now with with i mean they they made it pretty good in sweden i think because they could they could keep up with the responsibility to keep the distance and stuff like that i don't know if they were any worse there and or any like more worse there than anywhere else you know i'm I don't not know. really sure no no idea i have a visitor here oh this you have a cat too I have three. Two. yes yeah. yeah i have three cats but uh she's the only one that comes up here on the table oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. she's she wants to go to daddy maybe yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah but let's come back to the trilogy because the name and all the things say it should be a longer story behind this is it like this so did you plan it like like, like really a monument like a trilogy from the beginning no we didn't if we we actually we said let's write what feels what let's just write and see where we and where we end up so we 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 wrote a lot of songs and some songs became almost like melodic and some songs beca became very heavy and some songs became became a little darker and some songs became very playful and a bit um a bit um how do you say progressive and those songs i think it's not super progressive but a bit you know and very playful will end up on this last one that we are releasing now Leviathan three. I had a little uh, listen to it today, because as press, oh, you you, you, yeah, as press, oh, we have this is a small uh, fortune we have as press people. You can listen to the music before everyone else, and right. I have to say I really love it. It's, it's great. Thank you. And I'm as, happy to. As okay. you say, it's progressive, and I'm normally not the guy for progressive rock, for example, or progressive metal. If it's too neither, much, neither am I. It, it, I. I, it's for me okay. It's it's too much play. It's too much. I need those power parts. I need those simple parts. And the cool thing is, you have everything of this on on the Thank album. You. I appreciate it, but you you have the same taste as me then, because I, I'm not, I I like details of progressive. But not when it becomes more mathematic than emotion. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yes. I come from, I grew up, I grew up with Kiss, Alice Cooper. That's sort of like my foundation. And that's about melody and punch. You know, that at least for me, that's, I think that shines through sometimes. Even ABBA, Christopher as well. Many people don't think that, but that's true. It's a big yeah. influence for us. I see and and um you have a cool dynamic on the album i didn't i couldn't li listen so much that i understood everything i couldn't do the lyrics and uh, stuff for example so maybe you can tell me a little bit about what's the story behind this is it a connected story no it's not songs? it's, it's, it's not just... connected it's just okay. different songs it's, it's not connected at all and you know the lyrics are written by uh, a guy called per albinson so uh, and he's the poet so uh, me and christopher we write the music and the melodies and then we send it to him do something about this or here take this you have free hands but he's all he's also a theorem fan so he knows you know what the band likes and what what is was what, what um, topics we like and so on you know but then what's the connection between all the three albums what is how do they fit into each other how would you describe this? I would say it fit to each other. It's connected to each other the way we have worked with all the songs, the way we have recorded it. And instead of Leviathan, you might call it the pandemic sessions, but that's not as cool as Leviathan, <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, you have to say Leviathan is a big uh, entrance monster. Yeah, in the, from the sea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this so is, that's pretty powerful, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, and mystical. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. when you write, is it that you say, okay, I want to do something I've never done before? That's what I mean. Oh yeah, that that happens. That happens. I mean, 
when Christopher and me sends ideas to each other, those ideas, those songs are, they have a working title and it's sometimes so naughty and rude. So I can't say it here, but, but what they are called. But we talk to each other and we say, let's have this here. And then we should work something out like Wagner in the middle. You know, we have a song called The Unsung Lament on the new album. And it was almost like a, I heard the story when Queen wrote Bohemian Rhapsody. And here is when the opera section comes in, <laughs> you know. Okay. And I wrote something. No, that's not what I meant, Christopher. Said. Okay, I, let me try again. And I, I, now it's good, you know. So I don't know how many layers of choirs we have put on these, some of these songs, especially that one. I don't know, but it's got to be some kind of a record. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This is cool because I thought about uh, as you and some other bands on the metal, on the symphonic metal in this section, section um, are really like, I would say, classical components like uh, Wagner, for example, or Mozart or Bach, yeah. you can compare this. But in your case, uh, it's not one mastermind, you're two people who combine each other. So yeah. would you uh, compare yourself, uh, Trotzdem, would you compare yourself to Mozart or Wagner as well? No, no, never. That's another level. I I, I didn't mean I would never compare myself to, to those guys. Those are giants. It, it's like David and Goliath, you know. But uh, maybe Mozart and Wagner of symphonic metal. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound better? <laughs> But if they live today, maybe they would do some symphonic metal, some stuff like this. Pro, pro, I, th I think, I think uh, that if they live today, you know, they will write fantastic symphonic metal music. I mean, <laughs> look at Beethoven. He wrote da 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 da. -da. I mean, if he lived today, there were no electric guitars back then. So what he had to do was using this. But, you know, it's not far from rock, you know, mm. not at all. Yeah, he, I think Beethoven is a rock star from back then and Mozart. Yeah, also, also image-wise with his craziness, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. Totally, yes, 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 yes. Uh, but back to your cryology, what I was a little bit uh, confused about was that uh, Theron was always on Nuclear Blast and now you change your label in between yeah. the cryology. Do you want to yeah. talk about this? Is there a specific reason for this? I, I I can talk about it, but I shouldn't because I was not in charge of that. That's Christopher's uh, deal, really. So, but you know, I think they the divorce was in a friendly way, and I think Christopher want to go for something new. So uh, all is cool, you know. They, there is no hard feelings or anything like that. So now we hope that on Napalm we're gonna like it much, you know. And um, yeah, but that's the business part of it. I'm, when it comes to that, I'm I'm staying away. Okay, I'm so a we'll... horrible businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll leave that out so far. Um. So and when you listen to the album yourself, maybe a Thun Three. So mm -hmm. what what feelings do you get when you listen to it in a whole? What makes it to you? Well, it's it's actually the. To ask the band, it's, it's the wrong thing because we listen to it so much when we record it and when we write it and when we get it back to listen through it. So you almost, you know, you you're listening when you when you get the when you get the mix and everything when it's done, you're sitting and listening. Oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. I never think I released an album when I when I felt, oh shit. I should have done like that instead. It's always something like that. But what you learn with with age is to accept that, you know, because it's only in me. Nobody yeah. else hears that, you know. But uh, you know, I, I listen to this album and I smile because I think it's so playful. We have a song called Duende that connects to your other question. Really, I was listening to uh, to Spanish radio for once. I don't know why, and it was some flamenco program coming up. You know, with yeah. I should try to to write something with that, so I did, and it ended up in the song Duende. And I let Rosalia sing the intro intro since she has, yeah, I mean she grew up here in Spain, and she has that in her blood. So, um, 
and I told Pe, write a lyric about Duende. It's a creature, it's a mythological creature from Iberia. I remember that song. It was really surprising to listen to this on a Theorem album. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm still scared for what the fans will think of it. But you know, that's the nice thing with Therion. We can do a little what we feel like. And if you don't like it, it's okay, you know. But if we like it, the chance that other people has the same taste are pretty big. So yeah, I think you're no band where the people that like to expect that every album sounds like the one before. This no, I would, I would fortune like maybe. That. Okay, you have the exceptions, ACDC. I want them to be like always, but but you know, <laughs> yeah. But even they change. I mean, they put bagpipes in one song, and you know, I don't remember what song that is now. It's, and but, I think um, I've seen something in your Facebook timeline. Timeline, you're going to Mexico next next year. Are. Yeah, we and, are, and and uh, have a special show. So maybe you can tell a little bit about this. It's um, we had the idea to do. We were spoken to the to the Mexican guys that we are working with when we are there. We should put a. They asked us if we wanted to put up a, a show with a real symphony orchestra. So with that question, this embryo started to to grow, and and now we're finally here when we are going to do this, and we booked one of the biggest arenas there is in mexico city for concerts and the the ticket sales for this is amazing we 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 thought we we might sell out half the hall you know because it's made for this hall is made for ice hockey and stuff like that it's, mm -hmm. i don't know mexican ice hockey but but something like that <laughs> they actually That's have cool. a hockey league they do um but anyway so we're looking forward to that very much. We're gonna go there and and you know it's a full piece symphony orchestra, and that's tough to combine a rock band with a symphony orchestra because it's like two different worlds. Worlds are meeting, you know. Hmm? They reading music, we playing music. Yeah, but you're not the yeah. first band that does this. So it it is possible, I think. Of course, it's possible, and we have a lot of time to rehearsal with them. So, so it's yeah. going to be very cool. I'm looking forward to it. And I think your your symphonic part in your music connects to those people. So it it, it is like it should be someday have to play with a symphonic orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if the people will sit down or will they stand. We'll see. Oh, well, I think. I've never been to Mexico, but what I heard about the Mexican audience, I think they will be loud they and are, They artificial. are, they are, I mean, to go up on stage in Mexico is like, it's like a, 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 a religious thing, you know, it's like, so it's, you know, even when you stand before you go on stage, your ha hair stands up. So it, they are fantastic, really. So Maybe connected to this, what has been the coolest stage you entered till now? I gotta say, Wacken, the second time. The first time I did was my my first time I did it was the first time with I I made a show with a band, okay. and and that was a pretty tough beginning. You know, it was not a little club, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and and you know I remember that because. I think two days before that show, Christopher said, I forgot to tell you a song that we will play. Oh. And, you know, these lyrics are not easy to learn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, send it to me. So I was very concentrated on that gig and very nervous. And, you know, so I couldn't really enjoy it. But when we came there in 2016 again, I, that was the coolest of the cool, I think. Also, Hellfest has been cool all the times. And, we did a show in Japan called Loud Park. It's a festival. Cool. It was us and Heaven and Hell with Dio was headlining. Oh. And it, it's it's one of the biggest indoor halls I've ever seen. And I was at, speaking to them and they told me they normally use it for, for American football, but indoors. It's called Saitama Super Arena. And I remember after the gig, after heaven and hell gig, I, I thought I was 
going out to see how it really looks like from, from the audience point of view. And I think it was 20 minutes after, after Heaven and Hell stopped their concert, uh, I went out and I couldn't even find a paper on the floor. That was super clean, you know, enormous, you know. Yeah, I think so. I think Japanese people are very, very uh, fine and very brave people and very nice people. So they wouldn't throw they anything are. away. Totally. And they have their place that they stand. They don't, you know, fight their way in front of us. They have their place that they stand. But in their little square, they're standing like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. 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 I know a uh, metal singer, a female metal singer from Japan. She's really cool. Seiko, maybe. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. 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 She played Wacken as well, for example. Yeah, I think she was the first Japanese singer singing on Wacken back then. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, I, I think so. I'm I'm not totally sure, but I think this is a story by it, yes. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. But I think they don't have a big metal scene over there, so. Not anymore. It was more like, you know, in the 80s. Where, are you band big? Yeah, we're big in Japan, you know. Yeah. Everybody was big in Japan. <laughs> but I, I think that's changed a little bit, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, and uh, what are the plans you have uh, except that uh, for next year? Like touring stuff? Will you come yeah. to Germany? To I guess so. I haven't seen. We will do a, a European tour and a Chinese tour we're speaking about. Okay. See if that can happen, you know? I don't know yet, but it's definitely going to be a European tour. I haven't seen any dates yet, but it will happen. It will happen. I will have an eye on it. Yeah, I just have to see too. you again. And yeah. um, now let's come and to an maybe, end. But but as you are maybe, talking about plans, and I mm. as I asked you what you did today, so what are your plans for tomorrow? For tomorrow, I have a pile of work since I had my computer away. This it's like Kiev's pyramid. I have to start from the from the top and work myself down again. You know, so I have tons of stuff to do. And then in the evening, I will check out the hockey, which is my second biggest interest. You know the ice hockey. I was actually an ice hockey player uh, in my in my mid teens. You know, very promising. But uh, then I made the wrong wrong choice and got into rock and roll. <laughs> I think you could have done worse, maybe. Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. But I, I still like it though. I, I'm I'm following my team, you know. And, and... yes, yes. But uh, to be honest, you can get uh, old better in rock music than in ice hockey. Your career, yeah, yeah, career yeah. would have quit anyway. So, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And now you, you can be a Rolling Stone. <laughs> yeah, I was um, I was listening to an interview with a hockey player, and he sa said something very good that I and I feel the same way. Uh, they, they, his name is Jaromir Jagger. He's a Czech player. He's one of the last one with the mullet, <laughs> and uh, they asked him, "How do you feel working in in, in this team in the United States?" I don't know. Since I started with hockey, I have never been working one single day of my life. He said. And that's a little bit the same way I feel, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm doing something I, if I wasn't paid for it, I paid for it, I would do it for free because I love it. Okay. And I think yeah. this is a perfect uh, ending word for this interview. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for the cool talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. And guys outside, thank you for watching. Listen to Ethereum if you don't anyways. And bye. Bye-bye.